Hey everybody, it's Casual Boobs coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be, be doing episode uh, 13, 12, episode 12 of Get Good, and uh, we'll just get right into it. So for the beginner tip, beginner tip of the day is uh, is penning shots, right? So when people start this game, they say, they say, you know, how do you memorize all the different tanks and weak spots and all, all that stuff, and it's very confusing, and there are just like 700 tanks in the game or something like that, and so I can see why someone who doesn't know any better might think, oh my god, how can you possibly understand and know? So, step one of this is to uh, is to basically, I'm going to tell you what you need to do is start looking for patterns, and I will tell you those patterns, and then or I'll just I'll just talk about it now. So, so basically, the the there's a cheat sheet. The cheat sheet is look for the common things. The common weak spots are lower plates, right? Lower tanks that have you know everything, almost everything except the 279E has a lower plate, right? That's a weak spot in almost every tank. If there's a cupola, right, like this, and especially this skin just says, hi, look at me, I'm a cupola. These are usually weak spots. These are things to look for, and almost every tank has them. That's a little cupola. That's a little weak spot right there. That's a lower plate. So these are the things, um, and and like, for example, here's another, um, like the tier seven tank destroyer, uh, the T-28 concept. Do you see how it's just got these giant things sticking out? That is a really good indication that you should probably try to shoot those things, and those are the weak spots, right? So, in general, look for stuff that kind of sticks out, and that's the that's in general where you're going to want to uh, to aim and try, and and like uh, like I said, commanders hatches or cupolas or lower plates. Um, good example here is the tortoise. I don't have the tortoise because I've learned to hate that thing. You know cupola right you hit the cupola that's the weak spot so these are like once you know these things then the 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 challenge is remembering the exceptions right the rule is lower plates and cupolas and things that stick out bulbs and whatever commanders hatches and there are a very small number of exceptions and those exceptions are a lot easier there's you know there's and and actually now we'll get into one of those exceptions uh in this video that i will now show you is uh, the difference between like an, a T110 E3 and a T110 E4, right? We're gonna get into like this isn't I overmatched the thing. We're gonna talk about overmatching in just a second, but I just did it there too. Um, but you can see like an, a T110 E4 has a cupola on the top, and the E3 does as well. Um, pay no attention to the crazy bugs in the replay about what's going on with the tracks in the E3. I don't know, but the E3 cupola is not a weak spot. Uh, it's like 330 millimeters of effective armor. Things can pen it, but it's very like most things cannot pen it, right? So the E3 cupola is an exception. You don't bother shooting the weak spot of the E3 cupola. The E4 weak spot, or the E4 cupola, I was just very unlucky there, so that's unfortunate. Um, but generally speaking, the E4 cupola is not an exception. It's a big stupid thing on the top, and you should try to shoot that. And so, as soon as I load and show you and prove to you this, so like. This is a good example. Most of the time when you see a cupola like the E4, you should shoot it. And you'll start to notice like, oh god, the E3, I could never pen that one. That's an exception, right? And there aren't very many of those, so it's a lot easier to remember, oh yes, the E3, that one's got a hard cupola. As opposed to trying to remember every single tank and every single spot and so on and so forth. So that's one of the things we're going to talk about, is, is learning the rules, so that way you know the exceptions to the rules, and those are a lot smaller lists of tanks to remember. Um, so that's the big thing. The next thing is, uh, for the intermediate tip, intermediate tip, is, uh, overmatch mechanics. I've talked about this in other, other games, um, uh, other videos and stuff, and we've talked about this, and, um, people have asked, what do you mean by overmatching and stuff? And so I will go into further detail now. For the first thing you want to do, whenever you're playing a tank, or, um, you should always just be aware of the armor model of the tank you're playing. And the way you do that, the way I do it, and everybody else does it as far as I'm aware is, you go to a website called tanks.gg, tanks.gg. And by the way, I am on the website now. When I make a video, it's up here on recent videos. So if you're coming here, if you're seeing this from tanks.gg, hello, welcome. Thank you to the tanks.gg folks for including me. It feels, uh, it's an honor. Anyways, so you find your tank. And for this example, we're going to use the 60TP, the tier 10 Polish heavy tank because um, it's got it's just a good example and if you select the tank and you go to 3d model and it'll show you all these different little thicknesses of things if you go to live right this will show you 
uh, based on the you know the angle that you're looking at it'll show you whether you're going to pen based on the shell you have down here you can pick you know the ap rounds of the this is the tank shooting itself the premium rounds the he rounds you can use the compare button to pick a different tank and say all right what if i shot a 60 tp with my yeageru or whatever so this is this is a good thing to do just educate yourself on whatever tank you're playing and so when you do that you might notice that the roof of the 60 tp looks very green a lot of the time but if i pick heat rounds for whatever reason this looks it doesn't it changes so overmatching um only applies to the following ammo types, right? As you may know, there's the, the four ammo types in the game are armor piercing, AP rounds, armor piercing composite rigid, which is APCR, uh, there's heat rounds, high explosive anti-tank, right? And then there's high explosive HE rounds. Armor, armor overmatch mechanics do not apply to HE rounds. They don't apply to heat rounds. So what I'm about to describe to you does not apply to the two of the rounds that this tank gets, which is why some of the things look a little different. So with AP rounds or APCR rounds, how this works is if you look at a piece of armor and it is a certain thickness, right? Let's say that the roof of this thing is 50 millimeters thick. That means that if you have a gun, that's the shell caliber of that gun is more than three times the thickness of that piece of metal. So in this case, three times 50 is 150. So if you have 151 or 152 or 100, 155, I think in this case, we have a 152. Perfect. We have a 152. So that is bigger than 150. So that means that as long as we're shooting AP rounds, we overmatch, which means it doesn't matter what angle. doesn't matter. You could be the most slightest. You get one little pixel. It doesn't matter. You will always pen. Uh, even if it's like, you know, 89 degrees, like that is the slightest of angles, you are still going to pen. So that's what overmatching is. Uh, and you'll notice why, like in, in this particular case, when I pick heat rounds, heat do not overmatch, which is why all of a sudden, because I clicked two and I went to the heat rounds, all of a sudden I can't, I have to actually overcome the armor. I have to penetrate. It's not about overmatching. It's about penetration. Overmatching ignores the penetration mechanics, which is why the STRV tanks are either very good or very bad, depending on what is shooting at you. For the, for example, this is these are the tanks you really, really need to understand overmatch mechanics and also what is shooting at you to get the most of, because they are they rely almost entirely on very well angled armor. Right, the armor is not very good, but it is very well angled. So if something is like this is a striv shooting at another striv. Right, and it's it's just gonna ricochet every time. And I'm sure you've seen this, you've probably experienced this, it's very frustrating. Well, you notice if it if it's off to the side over here, the side armor is very, very bad. It's 20 millimeters, right? So that means I mean it's it's getting a little confused because there's all this spaced armor on the side, but if you happen to catch the side of a striv ever, you are going to pen because it's very it's 30 millimeters and 20 millimeters thick. So you will pen that, you'll overmatch every single time. Or if you have a gun that is at least, let me see, this is, let's see, it's 50. So again, same kind of thing. You'll need a 50, 151 caliber gun or higher. So let's just take our trusty 60 TP nation, Poland, right? With the AP rounds, boom. All of a sudden, every single, every single shot pens, except for this tiny little trollish little strip where it's just 10 millimeters thicker, right? And so that's 60. So if you shoot and you happen to hit in this magical spot, you need to have 60 times 3 is 180. So you need a 183 to pen. And if you shoot AP rounds out of a Death Star, you're going to pen an overmatch every single part of this tank no matter what, which makes sense, right? So that is how um, overmatch works, right? Um, and it's, it's not... This is, again, one of those things where it is hard to remember, even for me, hard to remember the certain different little spots and a lot of times it's engine decks and tops of turrets and things that the tank designers didn't really intend to be front toward enemy uh are the things that are overmatchable but your, your your cursor will show you and actually we'll go back to the e4 and e3 uh let me actually before we do that i'll talk i'll talk to you about i'll show you the actual armor model which i will admit i cheated and looked at before i shot that video so i could so i could know uh, if an E3 is shooting another E3 from above, right, this, this, uh, we'll go to the collision model. You'll see this, this front part is very, is, is weak, right? But this back, this part back here is only 38 millimeters thick. This is 75 millimeters thick. So you would, so in order to pen here, you'd need to penetrate the armor. 
but if you hit this part that's flat up here above by the cupola, that's 38. You don't need to. It doesn't matter what the angle is, right? You can see if you were live, all of a sudden this gets at a very good angle and it gets it it, it ricochets, right? Because of a certain angle uh, for ricocheting, which uh, it's a separate topic, to be honest, because ammo mechanics in this game are crazy. But this little strip here, no matter what angle you hit at at, you are still going to pen because the gun is large enough, right? The the gun is a 155, which is big enough caliber to overmatch. So this is there are advantages to carrying to playing tanks with big stupid guns. Uh, the side armor on an E3 behind the tracks is 44 millimeters thick. So that means that's one of the reasons you never side scrape in an E3, and you'll see me try to do this too. Is as long as you hit this side armor, you're going in every time. If an E3 tries to side scrape and you have a big gun, you can overmatch their side and then you pen. So we're going back to this uh, this this episode or the shot from earlier. You can see the reticle is green and I overmatch the top. Right? It's exactly what happened. Um, and then we'll do 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 do. do. We're going to skip through this a little bit. An E4 cupolas, right? Um, and then I try to do the, uh, the the tracks, and I mess up the first time, but then I get the best, the better angle. I actually hit the side armor behind the tracks, and wait for it, wait for it, and we go in. We pen for 711. But if I would have shot heat rounds at that, it would have not. It may still have penned and done damage, but it would not have overmatched. So there is an advantage to shooting AP and APCR rounds. Uh, and that's just that's just worth noting. So that's the overmatch thing. And then also I've got another little video here with it's 60 TP shooting 60 TP. And also shout out to Tank Killer 94 and the Oscar for helping me with this. So you can see I'm shooting AP rounds, and I'm the, the reticle is green. I can look and I'm aiming at the little spot, the little sliver above the commander's hatch. Right, the commander's hatch itself I can't pen with AP rounds, um, but the top of the roof turret because that's 50 millimeters and the top the top of the above the like the chest the, that part right there with a heat round i have to pen the actual cupola or the lower plate or some of these weak spots and i actually just this is a bad example unfortunately but i just i had to overcome the actual armor of that well angled piece of armor of the turret there um in order to pen and i i did which is unfortunate because it kind of undermines the the point here uh, HE rounds don't don't overmatch, which is why that didn't pen. Uh, and now we're switching back to AP rounds, and you can see again I'm I'm aiming for the little spot, and you can see everything up up here because it's AP rounds will overmatch. So the top of a 60 TP against big guns is just absolute cheese as long as you're shooting AP or AP APCR. And in that one I didn't pen because I didn't actually hit the right spot. A lot of these times overmatchable places are very small slivers of things, so it's hard to pen sometimes. Um, but here we go. I'm going to try again. You can see this entire top of the of the turret is overmatchable. There we go. We're going in. So that's how that works. Um, and it's again, it's not like I can't rattle off for you just a list of like it would be endless of oh this tank and this tank and this tank. But it's just a good a good practice before you go and take out any tank that you're playing. Just go to Tanks GG and look at the armor model really quick to see like okay the I uh, you know this tank if I if I expose my da 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 tanks that have big guns are going to overmatch and then just now that you know that like if this 60 tp i mean i i had him get in the perfect angle so i could look down at him a little bit right but if this if the enemy 60 tp was using some gun depression i would not be able to see these spots so just by having that in your mind you can play a little bit differently and, and hide your weak spots usually so the overmatch thing doesn't come up that often it's just that i you know i intentionally intentionally put it in this uh made it available in this particular example so that is uh, overmatching right and uh we'll get back to the right the the 60 tp on 60 tp action All right so what i did there i penned this part this 50 millimeter part above above the actual uh cupola this this part i penned that with 100 percent chance because it's only 50 millimeters thick and then i penned a bunch of this roof deck or the, the the turret roof so these these are that's what overmatching is and we'll go to the next one and the last one is this is the advanced tip advanced tip uh when you are pushing down 
a line of bushes. A lot of times in this game, there are lines of bushes in several different maps like uh, like Ghost Town or like Prokhorovka is a really prolific bush line that everybody uses. Uh, it's very common for scouts to have to go a little bit down a bush line, a little bit further, a little bit further, just to see, just to make sure that you can see things without getting in too deep too fast, and I really recommend that. So one of the tips, and I, I mentioned this in a previous video, and someone said, you should talk about that more, and so here we are, is go down the bush line backwards, in reverse. Uh, and the idea is, and I'll show you in this example so you can see... Uh, in this example, I've got an LT-432, and I've got I've got a Kanunin. I'm trying to simulate like a real game, and uh, and I've got I'm playing against an even 90 somewhere in this bush, and I'm 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 just gonna get up and I'm I'm going backwards down this bush line. The idea is that if I get spotted at some point, because I'm sure I'm gonna get spotted, this even 90 is probably gonna outspot me, or we will proxy spot each other, which is a thing I think I've talked about before. That proximity circle on the mini map. If you are within that distance of another tank, you are instantly both spotted all the time. Uh, so I am anticipating that I'm going to get spotted because I am backing down, backing down this bush line. If and when I get spotted, I can press W and S and and run out of the out of the bushes much quicker. A lot of times, people will go down the bush line forward, and then it's a lot takes a lot longer. It takes precious seconds. Oh my God, there he is! And we have to bail. We have to dip out of here, and and we, you know, hopefully would have gotten out a fraction of a second faster. You know, in this example, he didn't have, to be, have anybody on his team anyway, so it doesn't matter. But the point is, in these circumstances, sometimes a tenth of a second or a half a second can make all the difference because that's all it takes for the enemy team to is shoot you and make you evaporate. So having that little bit of extra time where you get out of that bush line and get into safety faster can make a big difference. So back down the bush line so that way when you get spotted you can uh more quickly get out of danger there's your advanced tip um and that's it we'll uh see you in the next one guys thanks